Welcome back. Let's talk to Tim Gregory, the Chief Investment Manager for Vermeer Investment Management. Morning to you, Tim. Morning, Nick. Um, let's talk Bank of England, Mr Carney. Um, we had this rate rise last week. OK, <coughs> markets rallied like a homesick angel, the FTSE did, and the currency went down. Now, I thought at the bottom of an interest rate cycle, we would have seen... Um, basically the currency go up and the FTSE go down. Was this purely about that this was basically correcting something and this wasn't the start of some more rate hikes? Well, I think there are two things there. I think, first of all, everybody was anticipating what was a very well-flagged interest rate hike. We've been told by Mr Carney that they were going to try to raise rates. As you know on this programme before, I said that I thought it was a mistake that they cut rates last year, yep. and that this would be simply a reversal of that. And then the big question would be, where would the rate cycle go from there? And I think what Mr Carney told us last week is that the scope to raise rates in the future is very limited. Uh, and as a result, sterling, which had modestly strengthened ahead of the rate, uh, the, the rate announcement, uh, weakened as a result. And actually, you know, I think that's quite a good thing because I think the last thing the British economy needed right now for its export industry and for the tourism industry is for sterling to be strengthened too. And I don't think there's any justification given the economic evidence that we should go into a severe tightening cycle. Well, in the summer there was reports that it was a 50-50 chance of the UK going into recession. Mm -hmm. And we look at the house builders, we look at the housing market, we look at um, a number of other sort of data points mm -hmm. suggesting that things are slowing down. Absolutely. If you'd been Mr Carney, would you have put rates up? No, I wouldn't, actually. But I wouldn't have put rates down last year either. So we would still be well, in, in the same position. Yeah. So I understand why last year's rate cut that I don't believe was necessary was reversed. But the simple fact of the matter, as you say, is there is evidence at the corporate level, certainly, obviously the things I look at from a stock market point of view, we've had profit warnings from Dixon's car phone, yep. from the DFS, which is among the major furniture retailers in the UK, from a number of pub companies saying that things have slowed down. So there's plenty of evidence at corporate level that the economy has already slowed. And, you know, obviously we've got to be very, very careful with the Brexit negotiations ongoing about how the interest rate cycle is managed. So my expectations are that rates will not go up in 2018. And if they do, it will be by a very minimal amount. Well, finally, we've got Marks and Spencers and Sainsbury's reporting this week. And for me, they're kind of <coughs> the bellwether stocks that I keep an eye out. Mm -hmm. And almost certainly they're going to I'm bet, you know, they underperform. Well, Next had a fairly cautious statement last week. That's also good bellwether for the UK clothing yep. industry. The difficulty with stocks like Marks and Spencers is trying to understand just how much of what they say about current trading is impacted by online retailing competition, by the quality of their own range of products, yep. and by actually what's happening in the economy. And those, all those three things could be at play, whatever the, whether the company says that things are doing well or whether things are still tough. So there's more to it than just the economic environment for traditional retailers because this online threat has become so enormous. Well, just finally on that point, there's rumours last week of Next and Marks and Spencers maybe looking to do something together. OK, is that, is, is that the solution to the high street? Well, that's very difficult. I mean, obviously, these companies own an enormous amount of space and they could reduce space and consolidate, but they're very different brands they deal with a different customer base in many respects. So those deals are just not that easy to do, quite mm. frankly. Well, it was amazing that I was in Sainsbury's on Saturday and I saw the Argos counter in the middle of it. And that's I, right. I never ever thought I'd see that. But, that's right. But um, yeah, so I suppose that's right. You know, that's illustrative of the fact that the new retailing world that we're in has driven different sorts of deals. So I suppose it's not impossible. Of course not. Tim, thank you very much. Thanks.